The following program is an exclusive presentation on the Acts Satellite Network and is brought to you as a public service by the local Southern Baptist Church in your area. Juana McKeever. And I'm Carol Cole. Lifestyle is your show, designed to speak to the needs and interests of your lifestyle. Today, Beth Smith, professional interior designer, will discuss interior design for the handicapped. Danny Scarth, a quadriplegic, and his wife, Lucretia, are building a new home with Beth's help. She's designing adaptations to make life much easier. One of the biggest fears many people have is the fear of going to the dentist. But Anita Albert, a dentist, says fear doesn't have to be a part of a dental visit. She's here to talk about her philosophy of gentle dentistry and to update us on new dental technology. You've probably heard the statement, a person is totally alone three times in his life, at birth, while giving birth, and when dying. Two of our guests may help squash that solitude mystique. Patty Jamison and Anna Getzoff will tell us about the hospice program for dying patients, their families, and their loved ones. Lou Ann Schultz, a Christian composer and vocalist, is here to sing two of her original compositions, entitled Hold On and When All Is Said and Done. In our regular departments, Lifestyle features Dr. Bob Lanier with precautions we should take to prevent snake bites. And now, our sloppy cook who makes fun and a mess in the kitchen will show us how to prepare piled high strawberry pie. Here's Gary DeHaan. Hi, we're making piled high strawberry pie. It is delicious. It's wonderful stuff, and you are going to love it also. You take a baked pie shell, which we already baked here. See, a nice pie shell already baked. Then we take some egg whites, which we already beat here. We put these egg whites right into this bowl here. Egg whites are so delicious. Make sure that you beat them nice and things like that so that everything goes out real good. They're nice and fluffy, all right? Then you're gonna add one cup of sugar here. Just add a cup of sugar to those egg whites, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt here. Just an eighth of a teaspoon, put that right in there, and one tablespoon of lemon juice. This is what you want in here is lemon juice. And you take just one tablespoon, yes, that's about right as far as a tablespoon goes there. Then you mix all this together here. Mix it all together so that you've got a nice consistency here. Things like, whoa, hello, help, help. Yes, I called earlier, the nursery. I need something to feed a, here, take an orange, take an orange to feed a man-eating plant. Get the thing off it. Take some cheese. I don't care. You can, here's salt, anything you need. Just take it and get it. Send somebody over quickly, if you will, please. Thank you. Good grief. Keep the thing, well, he's happy with the cheese and the orange so far. All right, now you fold in a quart of strawberries on this. We got them all sliced up here. Pretty beautiful strawberries. Stop, stop. Things are getting to me. They're, Making me so nervous. I wish that man would come to the door with the man eating food plant or something. Pour into a pie shell here. This is what we have to, they say this is all you gotta do is pour this into a pie shell. You don't even have to bake this. Can you believe that? After you put it all together, you pour it in the pie shell. You cool it. You cool it. And then stop the thing. I'll give you some in a minute. And then you put some little whipped cream over the top of it, of which we don't have any to put over the top of it, but we will next time we eat it. It's delicious. You put it in. Here, have some of this, whatever. Just keep, keep it down. You can have some. This is it. Piled high strawberry pie. You'll like it. Get it. Finally, the, the man's here. <laughs> I'll see you. Someone's at the door. I'll see you next time. Thank you, Gary. That sounds fantastic. And now I'd like for you to meet Beth Smith, professional interior designer, who's going to be talking to us this afternoon about interior design for the handicapped. 
And with us also is Danny and Lucretia Scarth. Danny is with the Sibonay Communications and is in the video systems area. Welcome to Lifestyle, gang. We're glad Thank you're you. here. <laughs> Middle of uh, the greatest challenge of your life when you linked up with the stars. <laughs> yes, it is. Would you share with us what's your personal philosophy of interior design that did result in your getting together with these two? Well, working in the design field over the years, I found that there is such a fine line between materialism and using interior design as a ministry. And for many years I was struggling with this concept and I couldn't quite ever find the, the right words how to express my thoughts about what should be my position as an interior designer and being a Christian. And then reading this book in our church library, Interior Decorating by Mr. George Anderson, who is a Christian interior designer, he expressed so beautifully my thoughts and I'd just like to read the first paragraph. He says, the most important quality of the home has very little to do with interior design. The home first must be a God-ordained sanctuary for family and guest, a place on which and in which God confers His presence and His love. Only then can interior design fulfill its highest purpose, reflecting God's design. So that's how you attempt to use it in a Christian way, then. That's correct. That's beautiful, Beth. Thank you. Danny, how long have you been in a wheelchair? It's been almost five years now. Uh, five years ago, next, well, I guess this week, I went to Trinity University in San Antonio where I played football and uh, started my freshman year and was injured in a football accident uh, on one Tuesday afternoon. So it's been uh, almost five years. And you and Lucretia are approaching an exciting opportunity in your lives. Lucretia, you all are building a dream house and uh, obviously in putting together the plans for that, uh, something happened that turns you in her direction, in Beth's direction, but what were some of the things you were concerned about looking for in a new home? Well, I guess most of all, you wanted it to be comfortable and lived in. You didn't want it to look different or, or out of place. You wanted it just to be comfortable, a lived in area. And so we've done a lot of fun things with our house and also made them accessible to Danny and I both. That's great. We wanted to avoid any kind of a sterile atmosphere or something that looked like we had designed it for a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. and she so aesthetically us. you wanted to overcome that right. as well as functionally. Right. Mm -hmm. Beth, uh, back to you for just a moment. How did you approach this new challenge? Well, when Lucretia first came to me, I think she did come to me with aesthetics in mind, but they visited me at my home the first night, and I think that night it hit me what an awesome responsibility <laughs> I was taking on, and I was a little frightened by it. So being a quote-unquote problem-seeking designer, the first thing I decided to do was visit Mr. Jim Gray, who is director of Paraplegic Foundation at Fort Worth, and he was very kind and very helpful, and he is a quadriplegic, I might say so also. And he directed me to um, Mrs. Joan Glanz, who is a, um, she was a director for TCJC in their handicap program, making educational accessible to the handicap before the government really got involved. And she had designed her home for handicap visitors. She is not handicapped. And she gave me a lot of advice. And so I visited her and talked with other people and kind of just gathered all the information I could on the handicap. Well, Beth, it sounds to me like you, uh, that, you, that you're well qualified to, to deal with this from the preparation and the research that you did. We're going to come back in, in just a moment and take a look at some slides and also blueprints and see what you all are getting ready to tackle. And uh, that ought to be great fun. So stay with us and we'll be back in just a moment with the Scarfs and with Beth Smith. <music> This kind of meeting is essential to world peace. So is this kind of meeting. It's the reason for International Youth Exchange, a presidential initiative for peace. To bring teenagers from other nations to live for a time with American families and attend American schools. To help bring the world together, one friendship at a time. If you'd like to volunteer as a host family, write this address. The refrigerator, the most important appliance in just about every home. That's certainly true of my home. I'm Buckner Fanning here in San Antonio, Texas, and our refrigerator, probably like yours, is not only a place where you keep food, but where you put announcements and reminders and 
My wife, Martha, keeps a lot of cartoons here that are so clever and uh, healthy reminders of the good things that happen in life. One of my favorites is Peanuts. Here is Snoopy on top of the doghouse, sound asleep. Up comes Linus and says a quote from the book of Amos. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. And Snoopy looks at him quizzically. Linus leaves and Snoopy reclines back on his doghouse and says, well, that ruins this day. Isn't it terrible how some people come along and in the name of God ruin days? The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. In other words, by what you have in the refrigerator but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is this. He loves you today. Remember that. Look at this list. High blood pressure, alcohol and drug abuse, depression, emphysema, VD, ulcers, accidents, heart disease, stroke. You know what all these health problems have in common? You can reduce your chances of having them. And the Will Rogers Institute can help for free. The Will Rogers Institute gives people the information they need to make responsible choices about their health. You have a question, you write the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. We're back and we're talking to Danny and Lucretia and we're talking to Beth and Beth is going to show us some pictures that uh, she has of some of the changes that are built into a home for a handicapped person. Beth, let's take a look at those pictures. All right. This first slide is showing a, a very wonderful person's home who designed her home for the handicapped for accessibility. And this little symbol in the window says, welcome. This is a barrier-free home for you. Here is a front door showing how simple uh, just a little concrete ramp can be and yet how important it is for any handicapped person. And you know, they say the first step, step for a handicap is a ramp. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have some very wide, nice French doors that make it a lot easier to pivot and turn around in a home and for accessibility into rooms without chipping the walls or having little accidents. Um, here we have a bathroom, and this looks like a pretty simple thing, but really it means the world. It makes it very easy for a shower chair to wheel right into a shower and makes it very accessible. And this is a wonderful slide of this person's pool. They had built in a ramp going down into the water, so as the person is held, as he wheels down into the water, the water buoyancy holds him up. So it's really a, a nice addition to any home. And finally, I think this might be the last one. Um, this is a jacuzzi area. And on the right, there's a small hole in the concrete that a hydraulic lift that anyone uh, can pick up, even I, it's not very heavy. And the individual is put into a strap and put over the water and dropped into the water very easily. Okay, and I believe we do have a couple more. Aha, <laughs> Danny and his new van. <laughs> Danny, tell us just a bit about this well, new van. This is a, a new van that I just got about uh, five weeks ago and have learned to drive after uh, almost five years of not driving for the first time. It's been a lot of fun the last uh, month. I bet it has. Has anybody been riding with you? Yeah, we've been riding with <laughs> After you, starting over traffic and et cetera. Yeah. Okay, and this one, what are you doing uh, here? There's an outside panel which makes it, uh, the controls to open the doors and let the lift down. Uh, to make it accessible for me and I can relock that door and, and get in and take off and drive. Okay, so it's completely self-sustained then. You can, you can literally tackle it and go. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, we also have a blueprint which Beth has brought of your new prospective home that's in construction right now, correct? Right, right now. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the blueprint and Beth, why don't all three of you walk through this and tell us about some of the changes that you've made. Okay. Um, when Danny and Lucretia came to me, the floor plan really wasn't, didn't have a nice flow to it. There were several obstructions, and mainly we want to make Danny feel like he's free to go anywhere in his own home. Um, here in the living room, we've got some nice wide French doors. We will have levers for easy hand use with Danny's hands. Um, then the flow will go right through the living room, across the hallway, directly into the master bedroom where we have two large French doors. The bath area is also opened up with a nice large breezeway right there with the two pocket doors. And then going down the hall, 
they're nice four foot wide halls. Quarry tile has been used for easy uh, accessibility with the wheelchair. It's easy to pivot. Carpeting is a low loop pile carpet that will make it easy to pivot. And I think the best thing we've done is the corner right here. Instead of a 90 degree corner, we've made it a 45, which is very, it's much easier to maneuver the uh, wheelchair around the corner. Then into the kitchen, um, I wanted Danny to be able to get water for himself or sit and watch Lucretia make dinner or do his homework or his work with him. And the island on the left-hand side of the screen will be used for Danny. He has a bar sink. He can get a cup of water on his own and also be able to sit up underneath the bar and watch, Dan watch Lucretia make dinner or converse. And then Lucretia will have her side of the island will be a 30, 36 inch high for her to, to prepare dinner. Then moving out through the garage, Danny will have a special um, door with a combination. Would you like to mention that? It's a, a digital touchpad uh, combination which will elect electrically uh, unlock the door and open it and uh, provide easy access and then it will just close behind me after I'm through. It sounds like you all have thought of things I would have never thought of. Danny and Lucretia, what are some of the things you've learned in the planning? I think one thing that we've learned is that even though you're in a situation like I am where I should be aware of all the things that, that I need in a house to make it accessible and, and easy to live in. I've also learned that there are other people that are outside my life that can help me think of things that maybe I hadn't thought of and do research and help. And she's done so much research that we would never have had time to do. Oh, I'm sure that's true. Uh, Beth, what about you? What have you learned from these folks? So much. And I just kind of like to take this opportunity to say thank you to Danny and Lucretia because they have ministered to me in that they have brought out the best in me. Oh, Compassion that's and sensitivity. And I would just like to encourage anyone seeing this program, don't hesitate to, to, to meet a disabled person because Danny has so beautifully helped me overcome my inhibitions about the handicap that I want to meet more. And I think he's helped me as well. We are grateful to all three of you for being here today and for sharing your hopes and your dreams. Carol, 